So let's go back to the problem and let's just try to make a very general ansatz of our two-level system. We're trying to solve for the time dynamics of the system. So the best way of writing down things is to think of the state vector psi as a superposition of 1 and 2 with state time-dependent coefficients, amplitudes c1 and c2. I have denoted them as prime. You'll see in a second why. Now, in the case when the light atom interaction is off, how is this state vector going to evolve? Well, if there's no light atom interaction, then I can immediately write down what the evolution of this state vector is going to be. That's just going to be the amplitude c1 prime at time zero. And then I have to take into account the time evolution of state one. Well, this is just going to evolve at the eigenfrequency omega one times t state vector one. And the same thing for our c2 coefficient c2 prime evaluated at time zero times e to the minus i omega 2t applied to state vector two. So you now can immediately see our c1 tilde, c1 prime of t, sorry, and c2 prime of t, they just include this very fast oscillation at the eigenfrequencies of the system. So even when the light field is off, these state vectors, these amplitudes of these state vectors is going to change over time at the fast oscillation frequencies of the eigenenergies of state one and two. But that's not really what we're interested in because this intrinsic evolution of the eigenstates is kind of boring and not due to the light atom interaction. We want to see how do the amplitudes change on top of this trivial kind of time evolution that we always have present in the system. So to get rid of this kind of, and to explicitly write this time evolution on top of the trivial kind of evolution of the states, we made the ansatz, we chose a different ansatz when we started the course, we chose this ansatz where we factored out this kind of trivial time evolution. So you see this trivial time evolution we automatically have in here, in our state vectors. And uh, now these coefficients c1 and c2 describe the time evolution on top of this trivial eigenstate fast uh, time of oscillation that we have present in the system. So I can even write this in a slightly different way. If I set my energy of my ground state to zero, then omega one would be zero and omega two would just be equal to the difference frequencies. So the ansatz basically that we've been using so far all along has been of the following form that we wrote the state vector as a time dependent amplitude in state one, time dependent amplitude in state two multiplied by the difference frequency between state two and state one in the system. So what do these kind of amplitudes capture? So let's write this down. C1 and T and C2 of T capture the time evolution on top of the evolution at the resonance frequency of the atomic system. Capture the time evolution on top of uh, eigenstate evolution. And that's really what we're interested in. So everything on top of this fast oscillating term omega 2 1 is captured by these amplitudes C1 and C2. Now I could have made a different ansatz I could have made a different ansatz because I have another frequency in my problem which is very close to this frequency omega 2 1 and that's the frequency of the light field. So this was our original ansatz that we had so far. This is what we call the rotating frame of the atom. And if the frequency of the light field is close to the atomic resonance frequency omega to 1, I could have as well made an ansatz where I wrote my psi of t as some state dependent amplitudes multiplied by this fast oscillation term which is now the light field frequency omega. Now obviously if the detuning is zero then the top ansatz and the bottom ansatz are going to be exactly the same because omega to 1 equals omega. If they're not the same, if they're close, 
then we're going to get different state amplitudes, but we can relate them to each other. And these are exactly the C2 tilde variables that we introduced before in the lecture. So this is the rotating frame of light, where now the amplitude C tilde describe all the time evolution on top of the fast oscillation of the light field in our system. Okay? So, so C1 tilde and C2 tilde describe time evolution on top of fast light field oscillation. So this was the original ansatz again with the C variables. You see when I introduced the C tilde variables just a few slides before, we were actually transforming into the rotating frame of the light field and now these amplitudes describe the time evolution relative to the fast oscillation of my light field. And using this trick, plugging this into our differential equations, we can get rid of this fast oscillating term e to the i delta t and arrive at a set of differential equations that I've written down here for you that we can now simply solve, but now for these state amplitudes c1 tilde and c2 tilde. So you see we have a, describe this by a matrix, coupling matrix, two by two matrix, where on the off diagonals I have the Rabi frequency. This couples the state one to the state two and the state two to the state one. And on the diagonals I have the detuning of my problem minus delta and plus delta. So how can we solve this? Let's just first look at the simplest case of the two-level atom uh, on resonance. So where the light field frequency matches the atomic resonance frequency. So omega equals omega to one in our problem. So in that case the differential equations uh, simplify tremendously. You can see we just have the rate of change of state one coupled to state two, rate of change of amplitude two coupled to state one. And uh, now we can basically proceed in a very simple way to solve this. Let's just take the time derivative of this first equation, gives us the second time derivative here, and gives us a first time derivative here. But we know what c dot tilde is. c dot tilde is just i over two times omega zero c one tilde. So I can just plug this derivative in here and we arrive at a differential, second order differential equation for C1 tilde. So this is what we have here. Right? So this is our differential equation we arrive at. And this is something, of course, very simple. You've all seen before. That's just a differential equation of a harmonic oscillator. And we just expect oscillating solutions uh, for this kind of differential equation. So we can directly go forward and solve this differential equation and obtain the following solutions. So this is the solution for C1 tilde of t, for C2 tilde of t, for a special initial condition, for the initial condition that C1 tilde at time zero is one, and C2 tilde at time zero is zero. So initially the atom is in the ground state, all the amplitude is in the ground state, and we have nothing in the excited state. Now if we want to calculate, for example, now the probability over time uh, to be in the excited state 2, P2 of t, that's just going to be the probability of being in that state 2, which is just given by our coefficient C2 norm squared, or uh, equivalently, since this is just differing by a phase factor, which doesn't matter when I take the absolute value squared, this is also the same thing as C2 tilde of t norm squared. So by having access to C2 tilde and C1 tilde, I can directly calculate the excited state and ground state population as a function of time, and we see that they actually oscillate, and they oscillate at the Rabi frequency omega zero. So here for the first time we see this oscillating behavior appear in the system.